The Manhattan Beach Project was conceived at a scientific conference about a year ago. This was an anti-aging conference where doctors would talk about different therapies they're using to slow aging, which is wonderful that this technology does exist to actually slow premature aging, and in some cases make people feel and look a lot better. But we were getting together at a table thinking, we need to do something significant, something that's going to reverse this horrendous pathological process every human being suffers from. So we sat around with a bunch of doctors and scientists and said, Let's do something like they did at Los Alamos during World War II. They had to build that atomic bomb. They were in a race against time. And we're in the same predicament. We're aging. We have to find a cure for aging before it kills us. The basic idea is that in order to, in order to conquer the atom and, and to create the atomic bomb, they brought together all these really smart people and uh, created this, this Manhattan Project. And uh, Dave Kekich wanted to do the same thing with researchers in aging and to bring them all together in a nice setting, which happened to be in Manhattan Beach. So he called it the Manhattan Project or the Manhattan Beach Project um, with this idea that if he brought together this really good group of people and he had them brainstorm over a weekend, that they would come up with a roadmap as to how to cure aging, or at least a roadmap to a roadmap. And uh, it did work the first time, which was about 10 years ago. Anti-aging has come to mean many things to many people. It's kind of an ambiguous term. And most people attach products and services, vitamins, uh, different supplements, protocols to slow down the aging process, maybe reverse aspect, aspects of it. Extreme life extension, some people call it radical life extension, is extending the maximum lifespan. And so far, no one has been has, has been proven to live more than 122 years. We want to push the maximum lifespan beyond, way beyond its limits. Most of the things that we regard as unchangeable are quite changeable and probably curable. You know, in the 14th century, they thought you couldn't do anything about a number of diseases that we routinely cure now. 150 years ago, we couldn't do much about most infectious diseases that we deal with pretty nicely now. 100 years from now, people wonder why we didn't cure aging earlier. It's about time we do. Aging is often distinguished from age-related diseases, but it shouldn't be. Age-related diseases are simply the later stages, aspects of the later stages of aging. What we know right now uh, with regard to aging is that diseases such as cancer and cardiovascular problems, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, etc., are all diseases of aging because you don't see 19 you know, 20 year olds getting these diseases. We know that, that humans are healthy and that they're disease free for a period of time and that something happens uh, once you reach uh, maturity that your system starts slowing down. And part of what all of these researchers are doing is delving into the, the molecular biology to find out what's going on and how they can, how they can uh, resolve these, these problems. The reason why I'm confident that we can go a long way quite soon in the next few decades against aging is because it can be broken down into sub-problems. Essentially, if we take the view that combating aging is a repair and maintenance challenge, in other words, the development of technologies to reverse the accumulation of various types of damage, then what we expect is that it'll be a divide and conquer issue. It'll be a case of identifying the various types of damage and figuring out ways to fix them individually. So it's entirely appropriate that a meeting that focuses on really combating aging properly would bring together people with a wide range of different areas of expertise. These are people who have not only expertise in their field, but they have been thinking about the aging problem for decades and therefore uh, they're the best people to get together and, uh, and tackle these problems as a group. However, it is important to recognize that this is not just about longevity. This is about keeping people healthy. The longevity benefits are a side benefit. We will live longer if we really, really comprehensively combat aging, but we will do so as a side effect of keeping people from getting all of these terrible diseases of old age, keeping people so well in a healthy state, the state like young adulthood, that the risk of death each year will also be like a young adult, in other words, much lower than it is for an older adult. We are going to be part, we in this room and at this conference, many of us are going to be part of the last generation to deteriorate and die from aging, or we're going to be part of the first generation to enjoy open-ended youthful lifespans. 
But I think if you go forward 100 years and you ask people, when did we cure aging historically? The answer will be at some point in this next 10 years. Never before in the history of, of humanity have we had the um, tools at our disposal in order to uh, conquer biology. To, and, and most of it has to do with computational biology and, and using the, the power of computers to uh, uh, explore all areas from nanotechnology, biotechnology, synthetic biology, uh, etc. Now, the holy grail of reversing aging is probably nanomedicine. That's going to take at least 19 or 20 years to develop, probably more, maybe like 28 years uh, to be in full production to be able to have an impact on aging. There are lots of technologies that we're developing right now that will contribute to this, that will slow aging, that can reverse aspects of it. For example, the SENS project that we talked about, the engineering approach to fixing the damage. That could be a much more short-term approach, which could give us very valuable benefits. Now, don't forget, one of the goals is to stay alive long enough until we have a perfect cure for aging. There are a lot of technologies that are on the horizon that we frankly don't need. There are a lot of things that we have right now in the lab that we can use. And I think that you know, where we are with regard to curing aging is sort of where we were in 1965 with regard to getting the moon. It's technically doable. We haven't done it yet. It does not take some dramatic new change in metallic. No, it's doable right now. What excites me and the Life Extension Foundation so much about this event, and we have sponsored it, all the expenses have come from our organization. It's not a money-making venture. But there are some very wealthy people who have attended this event. There are some people who have access to corporate money, government money, people who can make decisions. And if we can present this in a certain way, they may be willing to contribute towards these exciting projects that are being presented. The main thing for me is I want to feel and function the way I always have. I don't want to see that go any more downhill than it has. So that personally, that's what I'm in it for. If somebody wants to uh, cure aging, wants to cure their own aging, this is the only way to do it, is to invest into people that have really done a lot of deep thinking about what causes aging and uh, uh, people that have good ideas on how to possibly cure aging. Well, if you're interested in solving the aging problem and um, hope for uh, regenerative medicine, stem cells, um, telomerase activities, um, supporting SENS, or any of the number of uh, presentations that were given here, then you'll want to either donate money, donate time, or uh, find some way that you can help with the research. Really, ultimately, this is kind of the foundation to any other philanthropic thing that would exist, because if you're not alive, well, and kicking, you're no good to anybody in your personal life or in your charitable outreach. First thing we've got to remember is that no ideas would ever make progress unless there were some people out there, some visionaries who were willing to get them to get it to happen. I'm a visionary in the sense of the application of my time and my expertise. Other people need to be visionaries in terms of applying their financial clout to the whole thing. Just as we have a various group of scientists from different disciplines, we have in our business meeting people from different disciplines in the business arena. And the brainstorm session there is going to be coming up with creative ways to raise the money and the marketing support and the management support that these projects so sorely need. We look to the private sector because, first of all, these are the people who truly are, are most interested. If you look at the lifestyles of these people, you would say, oh, yeah, well, sure, they can afford it. But uh, part of that's true. But in addition to affording it, they want it. They want to live longer. They want to live healthier. They like their lives. They love their lives. If you think aging is something you can't do anything about or you're talking about extending the years in the nursing home, I don't have any interest in that either. But if you're talking about actually preventing suffering, preventing Alzheimer's disease, preventing bad knees and bad backs, and uh, that's a heart attack, stroke, that's a different matter, isn't it? Suddenly you begin to see the value of this. I personally think this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to trying to find a cure for aging. Uh, David Kekich and Life Extension have brought together all the world's leaders on, on uh, anti-aging and have put, put together an audience of potential investors that have the ability to make things happen. To be honest with you, the science is easy. We, us scientists, we've got it all figured out. We know exactly what to do. We know how to cure aging. It's the funding that's not easy. It's the, the reason aging isn't already cured is because of the lack of funding. 
Whether you have a Manhattan Beach project or not, this is still coming. But let's put it this way. Let's say there was no Manhattan Beach project and we did this in 20 years. Say there was a Manhattan Beach project and we do it in two years. We still get it. But who dies in those 18 years in between? Okay? That's the difference. The faster we do this, the fewer people suffer. It's critical that we start now. It's urgent that we start now. Our lives depend on it. The people who we love, their lives depend on it. It's clear from being in the conference that we are way, way further along the road than most people think we are at stopping aging. It will certainly happen in my lifetime. The real question is, who's going to pay for it? So that's the big problem. So it's not going to happen unless we somehow pay for this research. It'll happen eventually, but are we going to be alive to see it?